Hi everyone, this is Ming Yao from Ozi Engineering. I'm going to be doing a series of videos of using ANSYS, different aspects of ANSYS simulation software to model firearms design. Uh, in this video, I'm going to start with looking at a geometry and doing some cleanup. I'll be also covering in future episodes the explicit dynamics analysis to look at motion of, uh, of, of projectiles and mechanisms, as well as uh, rigid body dynamics, kinematic simulations, and also some firing analysis with Olarian solvers. But we're going to start with this model I found off GrabCAD. I want to give a shout out to uh, the GrabCAD community for having a wide range of CAD models ready for downloading, especially for Tony here who created this Desert Eagle assembly that I'm using for analysis. Uh, these are all really nice models and far better than what I can create, so thanks again for everyone for contributing to the community. In this video, I'm going to be looking at uh, how to clean up this geometry in space claim. Oftentimes, CAD models used for design isn't necessarily uh, applicable or good for simulation. One of the key things that we don't like in simulation is overlapping bodies. So in space claim, we can do a quick interference check to see which parts are overlapping. Okay, it's found 63 areas where parts are overlapping. And when the assemblies are large like this, it's usually not practical or reasonable to, mod to simulate everything. So the first thing we typically want to do is reduce the parts to th those that we want to simulate. Uh, so I can, for example, start hiding parts or deleting them for analysis purposes leaving only the mechanism or the components in place I like to uh, uh, simulate or modify. One of the really handy tools SpaceClaim has the, is the ability to work in the cross-sectional view. For example, I can see this part is overlapping with this, this the barrel. Uh, so I can triple click on this, which selects this part. And then I can choose uh, that again. I can choose to move this, selecting the entire barrel for some reason. Okay, let's move this component. So it's this bolt sub-assembly, and it looks like it includes the, 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 the bolt guide pin as well as the ejector. and a whole bunch of other things. So we can choose to move all of them or just one at a time. Let's, uh, let's move this and we can slide this back for example. Or we can choose to grab this whole assembly and move this backwards to remove the interference. So this is one way of simplifying the model. You can see we have some issues with the pin here. The pin shouldn't be back there. The pin should be over here. So maybe I should have rotated the bolt and adjusted, or maybe I should have moved this barrel forward. So there are a number of ways in which we can go about cleaning up the model. Um, looks like there is there is a hole there that allows us, that, that pin to be in place. Um, we can also go ahead and select components that may not be necessary for analysis. So most of these uh, helical Springs. I can triple click and hit the delete button. Um, here, for example, this component looks like it's interfering with the rest of, of the bullets, and some of the bullets are interfering with themselves. So I can select an angle and choose to slide it down visually. Maybe what I want to do is grab these two components, and I also want to move this in this direction. You can see everything is moving together. And that's because because these components are the same. Um, they are part of uh, they're all linked together as a group. So I'm going to make this independent, so it's a separate component, and I can move it independent of the other parts. So again, let's uh, now try to move this component down. 
Mm. Well, this makes it independent here, so maybe we grab these two and move it along the sky downwards. So you can do it graphically or you can we can also move it in this direction to make sure there's no overlap. So one of the first things we want to resolve is um, reduce the simulation down to a, a set of components that you're interested in modeling and then make sure there are no interferences uh, so that the analysis can proceed forward. So in this case it seems like there's some this, this component there's some overlap between this part and this part and we need to re resolve this somehow so if I want to do a simulation that includes just this part and this part maybe select a few components that I care about uh, what I usually do is start by hiding the parts that I know I'm going to be analyzing so I'm going to hide this component. I want this piece. So say I'm doing a, a gun loading simulation. I don't really uh, I, I do need some of these other pieces as well. Hide these parts. And certainly this part. And probably the bullets. This uh, the clip as well. This is this piece here. So let's say that those are all the pieces I want. I can just then select and move this to a new uh, new component. And I'll say ignored. And if I right click. I can choose suppress it for physics. Now these components are still in the simulation, but they will not be included in the physics. So these are the only components I have. For shell models like this clip here, uh, I may want to turn this into a shell model, which I will. Uh, but another convenient tactic for doing analysis is to create a symmetry plane. So symmetry plane here allows us to simply reduce the computational cost by half by modeling half the simulation. So I'm going to split this model and cut it using that symmetry plane and getting rid of half of this model. So again, I'll just kind of drag portion down. So here are for example all the components I have and now I can maybe move this forward until there's no interference. So sometimes for thin parts like this it's helpful to do a mid surface on this. We have those tools available so I can choose to um, let me hide all other bodies. And do a mid surface on this part. Uh, if I click on the edge here, it'll tell me how thick this is. So this is a half a millimeter thick piece of metal. So doing a mid surface, I can say let's do everything from zero to one millimeter. And we'll just select this surface. So it's found all the surfaces here. If I hit OK. It turns in, this into a shell, so now we don't have to model the thickness, we can just model the, the inside. So there's some extra surfaces we don't need. I can go ahead and delete that. We can choose to uh, pull surfaces in, so there's the ability to move this along this edge, for example, and we can just uh, move this up to that edge 
Or I guess I can pull this. Hmm, there's some strange uh, little items over here that we may want to clean up. But in the larger scheme, scheme of things, we can take care of that through the meshing process as well. So now if I look at my model, taking rid of the ignore section, this is the part that I want to simulate in my analysis. I can pull the, the back part of the gun uh, backwards with this firing mechanism and push this up with the spring so that the bullet loads into the chamber, for example. So that's a quick description of how I would go about setting up and simplify a model for analysis. In the next video, I'll show you how I set up a fire, a, a loading simulation with all these bodies using SS explicit dynamics. Thank you for your attention. If you like this video, please subscribe and watch out for more videos coming. Thanks and have a good day. Thank you.